week 12 is on its way, and here's the top 15 tight ends I have heading into week 12. The first guy, who else would it be each and every week? He's top of the list. He's top in points, and he's the top tight end in football, and that's Travis Kelsey of the Kansas City Chiefs this week. He's got a pretty good matchup versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This ball game, I expect to be a shootout and a high-scoring affair in this one. Kelsey, no one could really cover him in the league or on Tampa, in my opinion. So Kelsey, I could see him going for 80 and 90 yards in this game and a touchdown. The second guy's Darren Waller of the Las Vegas Raiders. It was nice to see Waller have a big ball game last week with 21 fantasy points in PPR leagues versus that same chief defense. And this week versus Atlanta, who gives up the most fantasy points to tight ends. This is going to be another good one for Waller. It's an indoor game. Atlanta can't stop anyone. It's a fast track, and it's another ball game. I expect to be high scoring versus Vegas and Atlanta in this game. So Waller, I could see him maybe even cracking 100 yards, but I definitely find, see him finding the end zone. He's Derek Carr's number one target in this Raider offense who has a bunch of inconsistencies at the wideout position. But Waller, he's definitely a consistent tight end, and he's a guy you could count on. Number three is Hunter Henry. Uh, Los Angeles Chargers. It was nice to see him find the end zone last week. The last two weeks, I should say. In week 10 versus Miami. And week 11 versus the Jets. And this week, he versus another, another NFC East opponent. NFC AFC East opponent. In the Buffalo Bills. This time, Los Angeles going to Buffalo. I think Henry, he's going to find his way to go get open. And this is another game which I think could have a shootout written all over it. Both defenses mediocre to poor at best, and both quarterbacks playing at top of their games And Justin Herbert and Josh Allen. So I think Henry, he could get you 50, 60 total yards and find the end zone as well in this ball game. So Henry, I got him ranked number three. He's been having a good season for the most part, but just the last two weeks he's really kicked it into gear with the touchdowns. Number four, Mark Andrews. It's nice to see him get double digit fantasy points in his last two ball games with 13 and 20 fantasy points he versus the Pittsburgh Steelers this week who knows if this ball game's even going to happen with the breakout happening in the Baltimore locker room but Andrews in his last meeting versus this same Pittsburgh defense in week eight I believe it was he only had 6.2 fantasy points and this week Andrews they're going to try to count on him a lot there's going to be no Lamar Jackson over there. So I think RG3 is going to use Andrews as a security blanket in this one. And Andrews, this is their only chance, I believe, for Baltimore to win this game, to lean on him and Gus Edwards in this one. Because the receivers were inconsistent to start with, with Willie Sneed and Hollywood Brown. So Andrews, I think the volume's going to be there and the targets. So I got him in number four. Number five, Evan Ingram of the New York Giants. He had a bad ball game in week 10 before he went on by in week 11. But before that, Ingram had 30 targets in three games. He's got a great matchup versus Cincinnati this week who don't stop anybody. And he's a tight end I had on my start list this week is Ingram. Ingram, I could see him find the end zone in this one. Daniel Jones obviously trusts the tight end. And this week, like I said, it's a good matchup and the stars are going to line up. For Ingram, I believe, to find the end zone. Number six, Eric Ebron of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He scored a touchdown now in three of his last four ball games. And a few weeks ago versus the same Baltimore team, he had 36 yards and a touchdown. And I think he got a similar performance in this one. Ebron, I know he's the fifth option on the Steeler offense, but he's a big target. He's a big guy, and he's a mismatch for most linebackers. And he's a guy... That is going to find the end zone, I believe, once again versus Baltimore. Teams, they don't pay attention to him when they got to pay attention to Claypool, Deontay Johnson, and Juju Smith Schuster. So, Ebron, he's a sneaky guy, and I think he sneaks one in the end zone here. Number seven is John o. Smith of the Tennessee Titans, and you want to talk about a touchdown dependent tight end. This is it with John o. Smith. The last three weeks, he's had short touchdowns. And if he didn't get those, he would have had single-digit fantasy points for eight weeks in a row now. But John versus Indianapolis a few weeks ago, in week 10, he did find the end zone. And he had a good ball game. So John o. Smith, I think he might find it once again on a short-yard play or what. Because they've used him as a running back 
jet sweep plays as well at the goal line to Smith. I could see him doing that once again in this one, but Smith without the touchdown, he's only getting four or five fantasy points. But the run he's been on the last three weeks, I got to rank him here in number seven. Number eight, Rob Gronkowski of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Gronk, he's been pretty solid now the last six or seven weeks. He's touchdown dependent too in a way, but Gronk, he's a big athlete. He makes plays. You know, him and Brady, they got the history together, and they've been making plays for years, and Gronk's the big red zone threat. And this week versus Kansas City, their defense... They're soft in the middle of the field. Like I said, we just saw Waller have a big game. And I think Brady and the Bucks, they're going to do that again. They're going to target those chief linebackers and try to get Gronkowski the ball up the seam in the middle of the field. So in this one, I could see Gronk having a big ball game with 70, 80 yards and a touchdown. By God, I'm ranked here number eight. He's just been a little inconsistent up and down the last few weeks. Number nine, Noah Font of the Denver Broncos. He's a guy... I really don't like for much of the season because he's always in and out of the lineup, it seems like. Or he gets banged up and nicked up, misses half a game, and then he comes back. But anyway, he's got a New Orleans Saints team this week is Font, which they don't give up many fantasy points. But Font, I think I've just got to trot him out there and hope for the best. So I got him ranked number nine. Box is quarterback. He's home where he plays pretty better at home and then on the road so we'll see what he does number 10 Jordan Reed of the San Francisco 49ers Reed had a good ball game before his team headed into bye in week 11 with four catches 62 yards versus the Saints this week he's got the Los Angeles Rams who are pretty solid versus tight ends giving up the fifth least fantasy points to tight ends but Reed here this game they're going to be trailing early and often he's going to be a good target in the middle of the field for Nick Mullins in the San Francisco offense. And Reed, he's a matchup problem for most linebackers. The problem with him has been health throughout his career. But in this ball game, I think Reed, he could have 60 or 70 yards in this one. And that's very solid for a very weak tight end position in the NFL. Number 11 is Dallas Goddard of the Philadelphia Eagles. Last week, we finally saw the breakout game for Goddard. This week he's got Seattle. You would think I would rank him higher, but I'm not because Zach Ertz, it seems like he's going to come back and have some sort of a role. I don't think he'll be at 100% in this ball game, but he's another guy that they're going to end up putting in the game at that tight end position. Also with Richard Rodgers, who we've seen have two decent ball games as well. So there's too many tight ends in Philly now. Goddard, I don't think he's going to get every snap at tight end like I said. So I'm ranking him a little lower. And Seattle, I know Seattle stinks on D, but Goddard, I'm just going to rank him low because too many mouths to feed for Wentz. And Wentz, he hasn't been good either. Wentz, he can't find guys. He's throwing in those. He's turning it over and getting sacked. So Goddard with the tight ends and Wentz's problems on offense, I'm ranking him 11. Number 12, Mike Gesicki. He finally makes the top 15 this week. And it's because I like his matchup a lot. He's got a weak New York Jet team that can't stop no one. Tight ends get open. Receivers get open. And this week, Gesicki, he's going to have a good game for once, I think, with Tua behind center. Tua, he's got to get going once again. And I think a good way for him to get going is finding Gesicki. Gesicki, he's had an up-and-down season. He's inconsistent. Would it surprise me he don't do much or does a lot in this game? It won't because he's just inconsistent. But I got him 12 this week. Number 13, Robert Tanyan of the Green Bay Packers. It was nice to see him find the end zone last week. But once again, this guy, he's touchdown dependent as well. It's most of the way. If he don't get a touchdown, it's only six or eight fantasy points for him. Now this week, he's got a tough matchup versus the Chicago Bears who give up the fifth least amount of fantasy points. To tight ends, I believe. And Tanyan, there's so many guys over there in Green Bay. Like I said, Lazard came back last week. You got the superstar in Devontae Adams, who's getting 10-plus targets a ball game. So I don't know if the target's going to be there. Green Bay's at full health. You got Valdez Scantlin. You also got Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams. They could catch the ball out of the backfield. So Tanyan, he's just 5th or 6th on the pecking order. And I don't think Rodgers is going to look his way that much in this game. Number 14, Hayden Hurst of the Atlanta Falcons. Last week on two targets, he had the old goose egg where no fantasy points was Hurst. I think that had to do with Julio Jones coming out of the game and them focusing on Hurst more. 
was the defense last week, but this week he's got Las Vegas. Vegas, they're not covering tight ends good. They're middle of the pack at best. And Hurst, I think he could get back to a decent game, but he's a guy I said to bench also. I just, I don't like guys coming off and no point ball games. I can't trust him. I don't know what he's going to do. If you got no choice, you start him. But I'm having low expectations for him in this one. So I'm ranking him 14. And the 15th and final guys, Jacob Hollister of the Seattle Seahawks. He's going to have a role in this game at Philly. Philly, they can't stop no one as well. Guys get open. Their linebackers, they're not that good this season for Philly. And Jacob Hollister, he was a decent tight end from fantasy football last season. Now with Greg Olson out, most likely for the season. Hollister, he was on my sleeper list. And he's a guy this week I think that can find the end zone and get 30 or 40 yards. It's not going to surprise me. You know Wilson, he likes to hit those tight ends when they got that good one-on-one -on -one coverage and also work that middle of the field. So Jacob Hollister, I got him at 15. And that's the top 15 tight ends I'm ranking heading into week 12.